All right, good evening. Uh, we'd like to welcome everybody to our eighth grade honors night. This is really our um, welcome to eighth grade and the uh, transition into high school credit classes. Uh, so what we'd like to do is have a uh, night where we bring um, the parents in and have a discussion and also have the uh, teachers present so they can have an opportunity to talk about their classes so we can have some transparency about what high school credit classes are going to be like at uh, Farragut. Uh, we have quite a few people with us in this virtual live uh, Teams event. So I will um, share that. I will we'll start with some introductions. Uh, the first person who will be up is uh, Ms. Schult. Hi, I am Marie Schult. I am the sixth grade and curriculum principal here at Farragut Middle School. OK, next will be their camera is off, so let me move and we will go Miss Nichols. Hola, I am Catherine Nichols Cornett, a.k.a. Senora Cornett, and I am the Spanish teacher here at Farragut. All right, next is Miss Janelle. Hi, I'm Kathy Janelle and I teach the eighth grade biology class at Farragut. Ms. Hancock. Hi, I'm Ms. Hancock and I teach honors physical science at Farragut Middle School. Right. Uh, Coach Swartz, unmute. Hello, I'm Randy Swartz and Trooper. I teach eighth grade math. And Dr. Treadwell. Yes, hello. I am Linda Treadwell and I will be the eighth grade counselor. This year I'm the seventh grade counselor. OK, great. Well, um, we're very excited uh, people can join us. We will also, um, if you can't stay the whole time or haven't been able to uh, make it, we're going to post this online. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, get started. So a uh, rising eighth grade honors night. Uh, my kids have signed up for high school class. What does that mean for me? Uh, academic rigor is a uh, big thing at Farragut. Um, every, everyone knows that. So we offer a lot of high school credit classes. Um, quite a few, probably more than anyone else in the uh, district, I would think. Um, we offer Honors Spanish, Honors Algebra One, Honors Physical Science, and Honors Biology. And these are our classes in eighth grade. Um, we do have tiers of regular eighth grade honors. And then we also have to challenge our eighth graders and prepare them for high school. We also have the high school credit classes, which is what we're going to be talking about today. So the first class we will discuss is our high school honors Spanish class. And I will Hand that over to Ms. Schult to talk about. So one second here. Okay. So for Honor Spanish One, for your child to be uh, offered an invitation into that class, the requirements as an eighth grade student are that your child had to receive a 93 percentile or above in ELA on standardized testing. They must also be and stay enrolled in eighth grade honors ELA. There are two choices for the Spanish one class. The first choice is a 7.30 a.m. class and the second choice is a related arts class. Both of these options have some considerations to take into account. To be eligible to sign up for the 7.30 a.m. class, your child is taking one extra class for their school day. So instead of an 8.30 to 3.30 school day, your child will have a 7.30 to 3.30 school day, will take four academics, two related arts, plus their extra academic high school credit foreign language class at 7.30 in the morning. The students who are eligible to sign up for this class are students who would also like to maintain their band, orchestra, or musical theater class. So if they are not enrolled in one of those classes, they are not able to take the 7.30 a.m. class. If you take the 7.30 a.m. class, you are responsible for transporting your child to school and dropping them off in time for class to begin. Students are not allowed to ride the buses. 
that serve the elementary school and there are no middle school buses that run and drop off in time for you to count on attendance at 730 in the morning. If your child does not go to the 730 a.m. class, they can take their Spanish class as one of their related arts. It would be the extended related art class. So it would take the place of a band, orchestra, um, musical theater, chorus, or if they were going to do the general rotation where they take eight different classes, they would take the Spanish class and then rotate through just four classes for Spanish. Um, Senora Cornette, would you like to elaborate at all on the Spanish expectations? Sure, thank you. Um, again, my name is Katherine Nichols Cornett. Um, this is my sixth year here at Farragut Middle School. Um, I did teach high school for seven years, so I'm very familiar with like the high school curriculum um, and these like high school classes that we're teaching here at the middle school. Um, I first wanted to talk about like some benefits of taking it like the in a year the middle school is one they get to get exposure to the language every day and it also fulfills one year of their world language requirements for high school um, but there is an expectation to go on and take levels two and three and possibly four and ap um, as well um, expectations for my students here at the middle school my honor students here at the middle school um, is taking honors level two um, at the high school and possibly more. I've heard that colleges are now looking for like levels three and four and above that now. Um, organization and time management, I feel like those are skills like all these honors kids um, need to have for the for the next year and participating in these classes. Um, there's lots of memorization of vocabulary. Um, we'll be learning families, family vocabulary and food and school supplies and ways to describe ourselves in Spanish, um, but you need that time management to practice all that vocabulary and go home and study that vocabulary. I may only give homework once or twice a week, but they should be going home and practicing all the vocabulary that's necessary um, for the Spanish one class. Um, completing homework on time, there will be quizzes every once in a while, um, every three weeks, sorry I said once in a while, every three weeks. Um, but my expectations are time management, being organized, being able to spend time memorizing some vocabulary. Um, but I love teaching the middle school class. I think the kids benefit from having that language every day as opposed to just in a semester. Um, and again, it kind of gets them ahead for their high school years as well. I hope I covered everything. I tried to write, make notes, but I'm sure I rushed through that and forgot something. If you have questions, let me know. No, that, that was great, Ms. Cornett. So I'll we'll go back to Ms. Schultz to uh, talk about um, Honors Algebra 1. Absolutely, thank you. So Honors Algebra 1, again, is a high school level class. All of these high school level classes mean that your child is being treated as if they are a high school student. That comes with the expectations for behavior, work ethic. It also means that it's their high school credit, um, it's also a high school GPA, high school transcript. For Algebra 1, students who are going into this class should be at the 85 percentile or above in math on standardized testing, and they should be progressing from the honor 7th grade math class with at least a C average. If your child is in honor 7th grade math, with a C average, this may be a consideration that you want to think about because taking honors algebra one as an eighth grade student means your child is completely skipping one entire year of math. So it's very important to keep in mind they are going to miss one year of their math that would prepare them for algebra one. And when they go into that Algebra 1 class, they're going to be treated as if they're freshmen in an Algebra 1 class in high school. And if they are struggling and every day requires extra help and they're at home with you and they're upset and they can't get their work done and they're just grinning and bearing it, keep in mind that while they may make it through Algebra 1, Algebra 2 is not far off. And in the high school, they will still be required 
to take four additional math credits. So as a freshman, they'll be taking geometry, then you've got algebra two, and then you're talking classes like calculus and other higher level math. So this may not be the right choice. For students who aren't comfortable making that entire, entire jump over one year of math, we will be offering an accelerated pre-algebra course, and that may be a better fit. This class will focus on the pre-algebra skills necessary to be successful in algebra. It will move at a faster pace than the typical eighth grade pre-algebra class, and it will preview some algebra skills that students will need um, in algebra class, but they will have the advantage of having seen that and practiced some of that information in advance. Uh, Coach Schwartz and Trooper, would you like to speak to some specifics as our uh, one of our algebra teachers? Yeah, so um, what Ms. Schultz said is absolutely on target. Um, it's it's a rigorous course. We, we push them pretty hard um, at Farragut just because we can. We have good kids. You guys know that. Um, and so we, we do try to uh, challenge them as much as we can. It is, we always find out kind of at the start of the year that once they jump into algebra, it's kind of the year that they they get um, stuck a little bit at times, which is fine. Um, they need to be challenged. They need to push themselves a little bit. But this is the year that it catches up with them um, just a bit. So like Ms. Trouble was saying, it's, it's, it's some work. They got to put the effort in. We'll have homework most nights. Um, there'll be days that they struggle and they're not happy and they come home and it might not be fun at times, but um, if they're willing to put in the work and and the time into it, they'll be they'll be just fine. Um, I would say what you know what Miss Schultz said, if, they, if they've struggled in the past and it's just, you know, algebra and math is just not their thing right now, but they've done pretty well in it. I, I would, if it was my child, I would think about the accelerated pre-algebra. Um, of course, you know them better than we do right now, but um, as far as me in eighth grade. So that's a decision for you, but but just be aware of that. Um, and it, it, it's, it's a good class for them because it does challenge them, but some kids just aren't ready for it. And, that's, and I think a lot of times we think that algebra is like a must for eighth graders um, if they're an honors kind of kid. And it's just to me in the long run, it's, it's not worth it if, if it's going to be a struggle. And, and we don't want them leaving middle school thinking that they're not capable in math. Um, we want them to, you know, be, be doing well in it and feel comfortable with it. So get, getting a good foundation is, is the key there. But the, and, the, and if they're ready for it, then they're ready for it. And and we'll certainly push them along. So that's what I have. Thank you, Coach Schwartz. Um, and that's why we're so lucky to have the uh, teachers join us, being able to hear a uh, hear from a teacher's perspective. Uh, you know, Coach Schwartz has been uh, teaching algebra a, a long time, so we're, we're we're good to hear. We're glad to hear that, and I think that's an important thing when we talk about algebra and, and what Coach Schwartz referenced, and me and Miss Schultz see it all the time with scheduling. Is there's this historically there's been this push you have to be in algebra and that's why having that honors pre-algebra class is such a nice addition that we've been able to add it's really given us that like nice middle ground for for some kids who, who aren't there yet so um you know really work work, work with your child and kind of uh think about what's best for them. You know, a lot of them are going to just want and really, really want to be in there because sometimes that's like the, the thing to do. But it, it's really, it, it's a better to make the tough decision now in April than to be part of that September withdrawal when we have to pull, pull a kid out because they're struggling in that, which might make them pull out of another class. So it's better to have that hard, tougher conversation now than to have a really emotional conversation in, in uh, September. So I will... Um, throw it back to Ms. Schultz for a discussion about our science classes. Okay, so our science classes are a bit uh, more flexible because we have two high school lab science credit classes to offer. Both have some really great benefits. Um, and I will also talk to you a little bit about what it means for your child's progression for um, Farragut High School. So the first class is Honors Physical Science. That is a lab science class to be offered 
honors physical science, your student needs to, to score at the 85th percentile or above in science on standardized testing um, or have honors seventh grade science with a C or above average and their teacher's recommendation. So honors seventh grade science, C or above with a teacher's recommendation. Your child should be in algebra and they really should have an interest in the STEM field because in order to graduate from high school, your student is going to have to have three lab science credits in the high school building. So this honors physical science class, while it is a lab science and it is high school credit, it does not count as one of those three required lab sciences. So they'll be taking biology, chemistry, physics, something else as they move to the high school. Physical science is a great class and for many of your students, whether they qualified for biology or they qualified for physical science, this might be your child's best option based on what they want to do. Physical science is a semester that's based in chemistry and a semester that's based in physics. So for a lot of your budding engineers, this class is going to be a very pivotal foundation class for when they take chemistry and physics. At Farragut High School, they changed their progression in the spring of not last year, but the year before. And starting in that spring, a typical freshman would take a class called Physical World Concepts, which is very similar to physical science. If your child takes physical science as an eighth grader, they would not take that class as a freshman if they successfully completed physical science. They would be on the path to skip that class as a freshman and take biology as a freshman. So before we start talking about biology, uh, Ms. Hancock, would you like to give us some specifics about what to expect in physical science? Hello, I'm Ms. Hancock. Thank you, Ms. Schult. Um, Ms. Schult co covered most everything that I was going to talk about. So I'll tell you the one thing that I had that she didn't cover is in this in the fall, we cover our physics. Like she was saying, we have a half of a year of physics and a half of a year of chemistry. And we cover concepts of space, time and matter, motion, forces and kinematics in one dimension optics, light, sound, and waves, and electricity and magnetism. So that those are a lot of really cool physic, physics topics and a lot of really cool STEM related activities that we can do um, with those topics. And then after, um, th after Christmas, we switch gears and we teach chemistry. So we have the uh, um, atomic theory and the periodic table ionic and covalent bonding, naming molecules and compounds, acids and bases, fission and fusion. So as you can see, it's a lot, a lot of content and it's really good for these kids to have it over a year as compared to like as a semester as a freshman. So things that I would look for, um, students who are good at time management and strong math students interested in STEM, interested in chemistry and with and physics. And that's all that I have. Thank you. OK, uh, Ms. Schultz, if you'd like to talk about biology. OK, for students who score at the 93rd percentile or above in science on standardized testing, they are enrolled and must stay enrolled in Algebra 1 or above. They are enrolled in and they must remain in Honors ELA they may have received invitations to Honors Biology 1. Again, this is a class where it is a lab science. It will be on their high school transcript, but it won't count as one of the three lab sciences they take in the high school. So for their progression, they could possibly take the physical world concept class, most likely they would opt to take chemistry as their freshman level class. 
you have to consider that background knowledge that they would have gotten in a physical science class um, and make sure that they are prepared to go into that progression. They should definitely, again, realize that you've got to take additional credits and further advanced sciences to meet those requirements. And most importantly, to be in honors biology, they all students must meet and maintain those requirements. So if your student has a hundred average in biology, but has a D in algebra and has to be taken out of algebra and moved to a different math class, they will have to leave biology. And at that point, they will not have an opportunity to go into physical science. They would go into honors eighth grade science, which is a multidisciplinary science that has a little bit of several different science topics. Uh, Ms. Janelle, as our biology teacher, would you like to kind of speak a little bit to the expectations of this class and a little more to the rigor of the uh, reading level and content information? Sure, thank you so much. Uh, well, this is my third year at Farragut Middle School. I have a background teaching high school biology, anatomy and physiology, and also teaching middle school science. So uh, I'm in a great spot kind of blending both of those worlds. As far as the biology course goes, uh, there is a fair amount of rigor, and I would say that to all of our high school requirements. Um, the text that Ms. Schultz was speaking to is our biology textbook. It is of a higher reading level, um, and we do utilize it uh, really for reinforcement and for students to read independently as they work through homework assignments. So really being able to uh, read scientific text at a high reading level, thus our need for honors ELA as one of their courses that they're taking during the school year is really important. Um, speaking to the work level of what is required of students in Biology 1, um, we spend time with homework, but homework is more something where they, students have additional time to complete it. So while it may take longer for them to do, what I typically do is give students anywhere between five to seven days to work on an assignment. And that gives students usually time to adjust their schedules and figure out what works best for them. With that in mind, I think it speaks well to what we heard from um, Spanish earlier was that time management is really critical for these students. Lots of times we see students involved in not only high academics, but also really um, active and extracurriculars, which is fantastic for their growth and development, but they really need to be able to manage their time effectively. And if that's something where it's seeming like that may be very challenging to manage all of those pieces, this may not be quite the, the, the place for your student. If, that's something they can do and do well with, and we'll support them with that, but just to be mindful of it. Um, the assessments and tests that we do in the course are more um, application-based. So students are familiar with really learning scientific concepts leading up to biology, but what they're being asked to do in a biology class is to apply and transfer knowledge, and that's a big learning curve that students can meet, and I'll support them in meeting, but be kind of thoughtful about it. Maybe it's going to be a challenge for them and we're pushing them because these students are ready for that challenge. Um, and we look at using data a lot in class um, and incorporating that. So there's different pieces and um, that are exciting, but also a challenge for kids as we're moving into these high school science classes. Um, real quick, I'll just chime in on biology for a second. And um, just talk talk a little bit about first of all what a uh, great class it is and how lucky we are to have uh, Miss Janelle teaching the class um, and does a wonderful job with it. We're the only middle school that teaches it, so a lot of eyes are on us when it comes to uh, biology and um, what we do with it. And with that said, um, you know we've already had a lot of conversations about it. Biology is one of the the um, toughest things we we have to schedule for, and um, it's one of the things that we 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 don't make exceptions for. So that's part of the things I like to talk about in the eighth grade honors night is that you know we we hold tight to our biology requirements, um, the the requirements you have to meet to get into it to get the invitation into biology. Um, I, I talk a lot about you know I've never made an exception of someone not meeting those requirements to get into biology. 
Um, it's 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 a line we've always held and we're always firm on it. It's a line that doesn't always make people happy, but I, I have a clear conscience that when I tell somebody no, they're not going to bump into somebody at the grocery store or at church or somewhere else that's going to say, well, he let me in. Um, that's, that's not going to happen. And we also, and this is an important part as we talk about the pros and the cons, is the algebra part is an important part. And, you know, if your student is, has an interest in biology, but is kind of borderline about algebra and, you know, that's a conversation to have and, 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 and something to think about because, you know, if a student is struggling in algebra, we are going to pull them out of, out of algebra. You know, that, that's a non debatable, you know, thing that's going to happen. And, when that happens, they are going to get pulled out of biology, no matter what their grade is in biology. And that's another really tough experience for, for a student. So, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we feel like, well, algebra will work itself out. We just really want to be in biology. And then that's one of those what, kind of what I referenced earlier, the tough conversation in April, May can save from a really emotional event in a, in a September and something that feels kind of kind of unfair and, and, and hurtful is when we pull a kid who's doing well out of biology because they weren't doing well in algebra. But we just need to be really transparent about that on the front end because I don't enjoy those conversations. Ms. Schultz doesn't enjoy those conversations. Ms. Janelle doesn't like it. The algebra teachers don't like it. It puts pressure on them because they, they, they don't want to be the reason that a kid gets pulled out of uh, biology. So that's a very important thing. So really have those long-term conversations. And, and, you know, we don't want a kid to really struggle through algebra just to take biology in middle school. That's, that's not why the class exists. So um, keep that in mind. There's plenty of time in the high school to get things done. So really quick, kind of wrapping up what we're, we're talking about with the high school credit classes, you know, the, the pros of the classes, you know, here in middle school, we get to take them for a full year instead of a semester. Um, inherently, that gives us a little bit more time to teach what the high school's teaching in a, in a semester. We get a full year to teach it. Uh, you get to build up some high school credits. Now, oftentimes for that, that doesn't really eliminate the requirements. You're just getting high school credits. Um, which which is a little bit different. You still have to take four maths, you know, um, that's that's still that's still going to exist. Um, but what it does do is it knocks out some of these earlier pre prerequisite classes so you can get moving into some of the upper level, the AP, the dual enrollments and um, those other classes in the future that if you haven't watched. Uh, Mr. Alexander talks about in our college prep on um, parent night that we had last week that is also available on our website and you know in, in a way for some of these it's a unique opportunity uh, not, I, don't, I know there's not another middle school in Knox County that has the combination of high school credit classes that uh, we have um, considerations uh, be ready for higher expectations higher homework um, you know the grade does affect your high school transcript and high school GPA there was a time when there's a lot of flexibility with retaking classes at the high school um, to remove remove and replace grades on a uh, on your high school transcript um, we don't make promises about what the high school is going to do in regards to allowing students to uh, to uh, retake that um, sometimes depending on their availability and their scheduling they are flexible and allow that to happen other times in the past they haven't been flexible and, and, and haven't allowed students to, if you get a B, to get a retake it and try to get that B replaced with an A on your high school transcript. So that is something to, to keep in mind. Like I said, but sometimes they, they, they've been willing to let students retake it with a higher grade, um, not always. Um, and it's it's going to impact your middle school schedule. You know, it's, it, it's going to, it condenses and uh, limits some of the um, other opportunities. So um, those are some of the uh, bigger points to um, keep in mind about um, about our high school credit classes. Um, before we wrap up, I also want to um, let Dr. Treadwell speak for a moment and be able to talk about just kind of her her role and um, what what she can provide and what she's going to be doing for um, eighth graders next year as our eighth grade counselor. So Dr. Treadwell. Okay. Um, hello again, everybody. I'm looking forward to eighth grade for two reasons. One reason is because I will have the seventh graders that I, the students that I had this year, I will have in eighth grade. And I'm looking forward to um, meeting those students in person, hopefully, fingers crossed, in the fall or in later on in the summer. And 
our office, the school counseling office, we are a support service. I've been here, this will be my 13th year at Farragut Middle School, and I've seen several students come through here, and I've seen brothers and sisters, and I've talked to parents, and I just want you to know that in our offices, in our office, we have an open door policy. Anytime that you come into the school and want to see us, you're welcome to do so. If we're not available at that time, we will make an appointment or we'll just call you back. And anytime you call us, if we don't return your call that day, you can be assured that we will uh, return your call as soon as possible. And please don't hesitate to call us if you have any concerns. Um, fortunately, this area is an academically driven community. So any questions about academics, we have the fine support of Mrs. Schulp, Mr. Edmonds, everybody here supports the academics. And we look and we stay on students who may, um, their grades may start falling. And then we may call the parents and, you know, we because we want to find out why is this student or what is going on with this student for their grades um, to start changing, I should say. But um, I look forward to working with parents. I've talked to several parents this year and probably some of the parents that are here uh, tonight I've spoken with. And, and the structure at this school is just on point. Everything, you know, the teachers work well with the students and the preparation for your students, regardless of whether they take honors or not, they will be able to go on to the high school and be successful in college. Believe me, after being here for as long as I have, I've seen and read about several students who have gone on to college and come out and were very successful people. So please, if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to call me as your eighth grade counselor. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Treadwell. Um, we're, we're very lucky to have some of Dr. Treadwell's uh, experience helping our eighth graders. Um, you know, that's that that really concludes the major uh, portion of our um, eighth grade honors night uh, discussions. Now uh, we will post this video on the uh, website so it can be reviewed. Um, we will also um, if we get some if if we get a lot of questions, we will be able to um, uh, answer those and include those. We will we'll check the Q&A section of the uh, chat here when we wrap up and see if there are any questions that um, were unanswered. Um, if there are, we will make sure to get those answered. If you have any other questions, um, feel free to email any of the people who spoke here tonight. If you want a teacher's perspective, um, if you have a, a more administrative question, always ask uh, Ms. Schulten and, and myself. We will be happy to answer those via email or a, a phone call. I'll, I'll always happy to help out and have those conversations. And that's another thing we always like to talk about here is, you know, we do have a diverse group of um, offerings in our eighth grade high school credit classes. But, you know, that taking them all isn't it, it isn't a necessity to be successful. We talk a lot about biology. We talk about honor Spanish. You know, um, those are recent new classes to Farragut Middle School that, that haven't been here in its whole history. You know, Farragut has produced, you know, plenty of national merit finalists and students that are going to Vanderbilt, students that are going to Stanford and the Ivy League and, and, and everywhere else you know, before those classes existed. So uh, I mean, we, we want to make sure that we are pointing kids in the right direction, that they're going to be successful, challenged, but still have an opportunity to be successful. So that's one reason why we want to have a lot of transparency about the classes so you guys can have an idea of uh, what's going on and what the class is about as you have these conversations with your child. So that's, that's really what we want is this to be a conversation starter as you have a conversation with your child. And I've referenced this before, you know, a lot of this, it's interesting, we, we haven't done these two nights before on, on a video platform, but you know, we did last week the uh, college uh, prep night and there's just a lot of 
uh, repeating concepts that you hear a lot. And I think uh, Mr. listen to Mr. Alexander talk about uh, freshman admissions at UT and competitive colleges and kind of the pathway, you know, tying that into looking, watching that, watching this, trying to make a path for your child, this being the first kind of half step as they begin the big step in the high school and, and taking care of that step. So, um, Ms. Schultz, have I forgotten anything? Is there anything we need to include or are we good? Um, you haven't forgotten anything, but just a reminder, if your child or you received the invitation for Spanish or biology, please remember to click the link to the Google form and that is due by Monday. Great. So um, thank you all. Once again, if you have any questions, thanks for coming out. Really want to thank our teachers for taking time away from their families to uh, be here tonight and to help provide this information to our um, future um, high school credit uh, class taking students. So everyone. Have a great night and have a good weekend. Thank you.